Hello, happy Monday. All right, you guys, tonight we are working on the new Aurifil block of the month. This is April's, it's Verona. So that is our new quilt block. Uh, so this came out on April 15th. Uh, a new block comes out every month on the 15th. So this is April's block. My block is July, so I get to be part of this Aurifil block of the month. Uh, and I'm really excited to share with you guys July's and we will start April's today. So thanks everyone for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and uh, 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so I'm here for about an hour and I work from project on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. Uh, and like I said, tonight we are starting the new uh, Orifil block of the month. So Orifil is the thread company that I know a lot of quilters use. That is the thread that I'm currently using. It's the one that has those cute, um, those, whoop, those cute little orange spools. So this is some Aurifil thread here. Uh, so they do a block of the month every year and uh, they have different designers do each, each block. And uh, we are working on this one tonight. So thanks again for joining me, everyone. Uh, also, I know some of you guys saw this already. I sent an email out today. Uh, my brother's face masks are now up in the shop. So I have one here. This is one that I stole for myself. Uh, so this is some of the fabric. He has three different colors of this fabric and uh, they are extra tall. So they're great for guys, but I, I like having it over, um, I like having it over another mask, but I like it because it can go all the way on the chin and uh, get the nose well and stuff so uh, and John likes it because it's big enough for his face so anyway these in the gold and there's a white gray and a blue all in the chevron those are finally up in the shop uh, we have one more filter left so we're also selling filthy filters with them and we have one more the rest sold out today uh, so there's one more there and uh, we ordered more fabric, more of the filthy fabric. So we will get that back up in the shop when we have them. Uh, so and you don't need to buy a, a, a face mask to get the filter uh, when, when it comes back in stock. We just have that one. Uh, there is a special, if you buy two or more masks, you get a 10% discount on the masks. So hopefully, hopefully you guys like them. We really <laughs> love ours. So anyway, I uh, wanted to let you know that that is up now. Uh, my brother donated over 200 to local shops in his hospital and uh, these are some that he has left and we are selling them to help him out since he's been uh, laid off from all the COVID stuff. So he's, He's uh, unemployed because of all this now. So he's switched to sewing and we are helping him out. So thank you guys. Uh, it means a lot uh, to us and our family that you guys are buying these masks. So thanks. I'm gonna flip you around. Let's get going tonight. Okay, it is fabric picking day. So let's, let's take a look at the pattern again. So here is the Verona pattern. It's by Carolina S. Musin. And I, all I've, all I've printed out is the template. So there is that little world, um, template or the Verona template and the rest, it looks like we are cutting, cutting, uh, rectangles and then just slicing off bits to get like this cool effect here. Uh, so, uh, in theory you should have, uh, some fusible interfacing to help. This is a raw edge applique. I don't have any fusible left <laughs> and I forgot to order some. So I'm going to try the glue method. I am just going to glue these down, sew right over them and uh, see how, how that works out uh, for me. So I have the instructions up here and I've printed out the one bit, but you can see this month's color 
we have that gray. The gray goes with all of them. And then we have three colors of like a mauve color, like a brownish pink. So I am using uh, everything from, from this bin. I, like one of my rules is I can only choose from this bin of fabric that I have. So this is my, uh, this is my fabric that I'm using in all of them, that gray. And uh, let's take a look. Let's find some mauve in here. All right. So let's move this uh, iPad over here for now. All right. And here are the other month's blocks. So this is March's block. Here's where that, uh, that background gray comes in. March. This is February's and January's. So these are 12 and a half inch blocks. So they're pretty large, larger than what I'm, I'm used to. Oh, looks like I didn't clean up from all our greens. Let's plop those to the side here. Okay, some mauve. So when I think of mauve, it's just kind of like a brownish pink. Um, nothing's totally screaming at me. I mean, this isn't mauve, but it's kind of a brown. We could just kind of be a little pinky and brown. Oh, look how cute this is. I remember we used some of this for the Splendid Sampler. Gosh, we really don't have many mobs, do we? I'm just pulling stuff, seeing what we have. You know, honestly, this feels, this feels a little mauve to me. <laughs> Wouldn't this be kind of weird for the sky? Um, I'm going to put that one on hold. That seems fun to me for some reason. Well, this is what happens when you put some restrictions on yourself. Ooh, now that's that doesn't look half bad. That's kind of mauve-ish. We got a theme kind of going on here. All right, we, we need like a light, a medium, and a dark. You know, these are actually kind of pretty, though, too, together, even though they're not mauve. Is this too over the top? I think it might be over the top. <laughs> it's a challenge for sure. Oh my God, should we do something like this? This is just bizarro times a bajillion. Well, this doesn't scream, um, doesn't scream Verona, really, but I do like these three fabrics together. I would have never in a million years chosen these three fabrics if I wasn't limiting myself. It's weird, right? I kind of like it. <laughs> All right, so this is what it was would look with the gray. I think we're, it's not totally what I think of mauve. I mean, I think maybe a little bit duller than this would be mauve, but it's kind of fun. I don't know. Do you guys like it? It's kind of fun. You could always go like this. You're not seeing the sky in this pic. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's the problem is that it really should be kind of like a sky, shouldn't it? Maybe that's a little bit more sunset-y. Here, let, let's get this right by so you guys can see too. So obviously we are a bit off of that. Um, but it's something. Yeah, it's a little out there, surely. I do. I agree too. Maybe maybe we should err on the side of more sunsetty. Maybe maybe this one's the problem. Let's just let's just back it up a sec here. I'm gonna have to reorganize this, I think. Alright. You like the stripey one better than the floral? It does suggest the mauve. Maybe this is the middle one. This could be here. That would be kind of fun. That's too much now. Ooh, that's that's too bright. We're in the yellow world there. I want to still imply mauve. <laughs> you guys, I totally have nothing here. Mm, that's too much. Those are both too much. What if we just go something like this? It's a little crazy. Wow, this is a tricky one. We could just go all like 
browns. So this kind of middle one kind of feels a little bit more more pink, print pink, sorry. All right, I keep switching them. You like the pink? So it is kind of like that yellow, brown, and pink if we think about it that way. Did we like the stripes? God, the stripes are so weird, aren't they? Oh yeah, you're right. These could go this way, you're right. We could do horizontal. Now that's not bad. Get some butterflies in there. You know, it's odd. It's not quite mauve, but we got we have a we have a little pink stripe in there. You like the light pink? No stripe. You like the light pink better? So something like this. Oh, you guys, I'm not completely sold on that yet. Right bottom corner. Like one of these. This has a giant fox in it, though. I think this would be kind of a little bit goofy. It's just too much. I think that one's just too over the top. Uh, we kind of already used this fabric, but a different color. I want to try to find something just duller. You know, you know, we do have something like this, just a travel stamp thing. That's kind of interesting. Maybe it feels like a travel theme or something a little bit. At some point, we're just going to have to decide, right? Kind of like the idea of travel, um, just because that's what we're kind of doing here. <laughs> well, thanks for sticking with me tonight, at least while I go through this. This is, we just got a pile of crazy here. Oh my God, what about freaking cupcakes? That's just too weird. You know what? I think we're going with this. It's subtle enough. This is a bit crazy. It has some of the dark colors that will make this go. And you know what? At some point, just got to choose. I know this is pretty dark up top, but I think we're okay. <laughs> I'm calling it. We're doing this. Uh, it's It's kind of a color scheme I'm not used to for sure the whole mauve thing in general so that that adds to the that's probably why there's not a whole lot of that in here um all right let's let's just decide done done travel in the middle all right we can try that um well now that we have some some things laid out here you like the pink as light with the stripe I, you know I, I'm kind of like the stripe yet too but let's let's see so all right um, well, and this has stripes too, so that would maybe go with that. So I'm just trying to get a sense of it. So this would be kind of our cityscape, right? Travel in the middle, potentially. Yeah, that might be cute. I'm just trying to go with the colors because it's kind of a mauve on top. Let's, let's spread these out. So let's say this is, you know, the city, and this is the first bit of the city or sky, and then we have the second part of the sky. I always like kind of trying to get the proportions of stuff going on, just to see where we're at. And then this would be the far away sky. Now this is kind of dark yet, um, but I think, you know, I think it's just gonna work. At some point, like I said, you just gotta choose as I go and find more fabric. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm going like this. I think I think let's just call it as I switch it over again. I don't know. I kind of think it's a little much having these in the middle. I like that it's kind of a big print and a smaller print, and then the then like basically a solid. Uh, so you know what? 
the end. This is what's kind of fun about this stuff is you just get to see works. And, uh, you know, it might be one of those surprises of like, oh my gosh, these totally go together and I love it. So <laughs> let's just see. All right. So back to the instructions here. All right. I, I did not print out the instructions. I did print out the template that we need later. So we will have to um, put this together. Uh, all right. I do have my scissors by me, so that's good. Okay. First off. Up. Okay, the light mauve. <laughs> okay, light, medium, dark. Okay, so the light mauve is our our little travel one here. Okay, so we're going to cut a rectangle that's seven and three quarters by twelve and a half. All right, and then we're going to cut like a little angle off of it. All right, I think I can handle that. Let's get that in back, and I'm going to just throw these to the side. Would you have ever chosen these colors together? I don't think I would have ever done this as a quilt, like, ever. <laughs> so it, it's just kind of, it's going to be fun seeing what this looks like. All right, let's get the cutting board. I do have freezer paper. I will use the freezer paper to, um, to get the design on. I think I may actually need some sort of base fabric for this all to go on. We will see. I am uh, reading through the instructions as we go here. Okay, so oh, look how pretty this is. All right, I'm going to give this a little press to start off just because we are a little bit folded here. And then we'll cut our 12 and a half um, by, what was it? seven and three quarters. I don't think my iron is quite hot yet. Oh yeah, steam a seam two. So that is, that's the fusible that I typically use. Um, I don't, there might be a link to it here. I was going to try the steam a seam two light. So apparently there's a light version of it as well. Uh, that people have said is easier to hand stitch through. So I think I'm going to give that a try next time I purchase. I suppose I need to purchase a whole lot of some of these things again soon. Should just, should just do it. All right, I'm going to grab my square. Okay, so I happen to have a square that is 12 and a half inches. So I'm gonna just use this. I'm gonna hopefully just go with whatever. It, hopefully this is square enough. So, gosh, it's hard to see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and three quarters. All right, it's not quite square. So what I'm going to do is just trim this edge, come along this side, and then uh, come down. Oh, Patty says that the light version of Steam Seam 2 is, is great. Okay, so that's good to know. I have not used, used it before. But I do like the Steam Seam 2 in general because it's a sticker. So that's what's so awesome about it is not only uh, does it fuse, but it is a sticker while you're figuring out where everything should go. All right, now that I'm not going to be able to cut without turning. So let's do that. There we go. Just cutting a chunk out of here. All right, so it's 12 and a half, so it's the whole length of my ruler here. All right, I think that looks good. Get this extra out of the way. All right. That is, oh gosh, I hope I cut the right thing. Yeah, the light, 
The light mob. Okay, so we must be placing our city right on top of here. So I'm hoping that this is the base, like the bottom line. Uh, I guess we'll see. All right, so now we need to uh, get that little bit of an angle in. And you know what? I think I'm going to just, instead of drawing a line, I'm going to just uh, get it on my ruler right here. And seven inches is right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So all I need to do is connect this line, this dot right here to the corner, and then we should be good to go. So let's get a ruler that actually, oops, that's the length that can um, go that entire length. So I'm just, I'm just using my mat to do this. So seven, and then it goes all the way up to the three quarter inch. And you know what? I think I'm going to do it this way so that if I slide, I'm not accidentally cutting into the fabric. Ooh, let's get it straight again. Okay, seven inches to this corner down here. All right, I think that looks good. Let's give it a little test. This is kind of fun. I, I don't think I've ever done anything like this before. Uh, cutting the angles into here. Ooh, so work a little bit on the bias there. So it's it's stretching a, a tad. All right, uh, there we go. So we got a little bit of an off kilter, a little trapezoid going on here now. Um, great, so that is done. Uh, the next step is we're basically doing that same concept, but for the mauve one in the middle. So we're gonna cut a four inch by 12 and a half inch strip. So now this is the medium, uh, which in our case is this pink. So let's set this aside for the moment. And get this guy out again. Hello, hello everyone. Oh yes, so uh, that, that they're absolutely right, Gretchen. So this designer um, is just the most amazing quilter. So Carolina Asmussen, um, I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing that quite right, but she, if you go to the Aurifil blog, so that's Aura, A, or A-U-R-I, and then Buzz, so Aura Buzz, if you go to that site, uh, and then go until you see the April, uh, April block of the month designer, click on there, and you can see some of her amazing, amazing quilting, like intensely rich, deep, uh, machine quilting and it, it it is just amazing it really is so i'm i would love to do anything like that all right so i'm going to let's get the other the big room out for this gosh i feel like i'm gonna break everything today you guys it's one of those days all right so i need 12 and a half inches by four inches so let's start out by kind of squaring up again. So I'm going to go the 12 and a half here, and then I'm just going to cut into the four, and then we'll rotate around so I can get to the other side. We're clearly not very square on this one. Oh, so this is just a, uh, it's a work glove. I should look them up. So this is a gift uh, from Noeline in here. Um, so it's from Australia, but it's just a, it's a work glove. It's one of those gloves that is meant to like protect your hand if you, you know, accidentally slice it. <laughs> so, and it also has a rubber base, which is great for holding a ruler. And it's my size, which is amazing because nothing comes in my size. Like my fingertips are actually to the end, which like what? I've never had gloves that are like that. So, um. I'm, I'm trying to make it a habit to wear a cutting glove. I've seen too many scary photos on Facebook of people cutting themselves with the rotary cutter and 
that's just too scary for me. <laughs> so I thought I need to do that. Oh, there you go, Nolene. Kitchen grade five cutting gloves from, from eBay. Oh, okay, from eBay. Yeah, I have a different version, but you know, I always get, I get the small gloves, but they just make it tighter and, but the fingers are still super long. So these actually fit, which is crazy. All right, let's uh, do the four inches here and the 12 and a half. Oop, that's six inches. Twelve and a half. Going to be four. Right about there. Ooh, we are not very straight either, but that's okay. This is a pretty fabric. All right. That's all uh, we need of him. Okay, so now again, we need to do that kind of little angling situation here. So I need one and a half from this side up to this corner and three quarters down here. So now there's a little area of this cutting board that has more dimensions in there. I think I'm going to go on one of those so I can do this measurement a little easier. So, okay, one and a half. So that'd be right there. So let's, let's just start there. Okay, one and a half. So this corner to one and a half. Feel free to mark the edge. I might actually mark the edge for this other one because it's a like a three quarter inch. One and a half. God, this is kind of scary. I feel scared doing this. All right, let's do it though. Ah. Ooh, I don't think I went through all the fabric there. Feels like it might be time. Oh, no, that worked. I was gonna say it feels like it's time to maybe replace this blade. It sounded a little funny. All right, so that was one. So now the other one is going up three quarters. So this one I might actually measure. So let's just get, uh, I'm gonna just get a little, just a pencil out and I'm gonna measure up three quarters of an inch. All right, let's just put a little tick mark right there. That's good enough. Oh, you had to change your blade today. Yep, one of those things. This is such a funny shape. Oh, gotta get my cutting glove back on. Three quarters. Freaked myself out there for a second. Okay, we did it. All right, so I suspect there's some sort of overlap here, but I just want to peek. So we got that guy. My guess is he goes right there. All right, <laughs> it's just, these are such bizarre fabrics together, but we're gonna make it work. Um, okay, there's actually some pink in here. I can see like little pink, little, uh, little super, little lines in here that are that are pink so in theory they go together it's kind of fun circles and then like these triangles uh all right next up let's see what comes next i kind of like having it on the ipad and then only printing um what i need although <laughs> i was gonna say i spoke too soon now it's not moving but there we go all right now this is the uh the dark mauve Oh, we're actually sewing these together. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, that's that's gonna make things a lot easier. So we are ending up with an actual sewn piece. Okay, that's good to good to see. Um, that's great. So uh, that'll make it easier. <laughs> we won't be appliquing it right on top of each other though. So that's great. All right. Um, a four inch. So another four inch by twelve and a half. Oh, I should have just cut both of those at the same time. But oh well. 
that's what I get for not uh, not looking ahead, not reading ahead of the pattern, right? Uh, I am using an, just Ulfa blades. I think this is an Ulfa uh, blade. I, I actually like buying them. They're expensive, these blades, but I, I like buying them in like groupings of five or ten if you can find them, because sometimes you can get them for a little cheaper. I mean, it you do, it is an expense for sure. Um, but I go through them enough that it kind of makes it okay, I suppose. Yeah, and, and I just use the Ulfa ones. I think I may have a Fiskars one. Uh, my new favorite thing is the um, bigger blades, the 60 millimeter blades, I believe. This is the 45. This is kind of like your typical one. They come smaller. I think those are, what are the smaller ones? 11 millimeter? That seems a little small, but that sticks in my head for some reason. And then there's the 60 one, which is like big. Um, that if I layer a bunch of fabric together, that's that works great. This is a good filler fabric. Oh, 28. Oh, okay. So 28 is the smaller one. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, and uh, I've heard a lot of people really love those. I, I don't have... Uh, I don't have one of those smaller ones. I think my mom really likes those too. Gina says that the 28 millimeter is your, fa your fave. Sharla loves the 60 millimeter. Yep, I don't have one of those at home here, but yeah, that 60 millimeter one, I'm digging that one. Yes, it's a pizza cutter size for sure, the 60. All right. What I do like about the 60 millimeter one is that I, if I am cutting a lot like thicker fabric, which really you shouldn't be cutting through that many layers of fabric, but if you do, uh, the center area is up a little bit higher, so you have more kind of blade exposed. So that's why, that's why I decided to give that 60 millimeter one a try. Okay, let's do our uh, 12 and a half by four. I suppose this edge probably isn't square, so let's do that again first. Gosh, today I am feeling as if my mat or my workspace is not nearly large enough, you guys. Oy. Gail says I have a 60 millimeter and it's good for layers. That's what I like mine for, for sure. Noeline says I love the 28 millimeter, great for small pieces. Yeah, I need to acquire one of those one of these days, I think. Okay, four inches. Yep, four by 12 and a half. So 12 and a half is the size of the block. So all of these 12 and a halfs are the width. Okay, great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Makes sense that it would end there on the 12. Okay, I'm at the wrong cutting angle. I veered off. I still dislike cutting the most of all. <laughs> uh, even over pressing, I, I think I think cutting is the worst. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me, the worst uh, bit for me. Orifel does big blocks. <laughs> is that kind of the general stance? I don't think I've done an Orifel project before. It's kind of fun. I mean, I, I haven't. I don't do big projects like this in general, or I haven't in a while. Not big projects, but um, larger, uh, larger blocks. It's been a while for a project like that. I'm too paranoid to actually look at the numbers. <laughs> Just so stupid. Ah. Too much fear in the cutting for me. I think that's why it's my least, least favorite bit. You got super sharp, deadly blade, and then you got um, the fear of just cutting it wrong or sliding off. Meh. I could do without all that. Oh, Christy, that's exciting. Yes, give it a go. We'll all be here for you for sure. 
Oh, you're doing the RFL rainbow black. So yes, so they they there's just that um release that really pretty rainbow. It looked like it was foundation paper pieced uh black. That was pretty cool. Okay. This one is just one cut. It's going uh, um from the bottom angle and then we have two and a half inches from the top. Gosh, I hope I did the last one right. Yeah, from the top and bottom. This one is two and a half inches from the top. I'm gonna, again gonna go over here where I can see the half inch areas. So two and a half from the top, but then we're cutting down to this one. Okay, <laughs> had, to, had to get that straight in my head. So one, two and a half. We'll go right here. And I guess this time I'll cut on this this side of it. Usually, typically I like cutting on the side that is not our good piece. So typically I would want to go like this, this, and then cut on this side. Because if I veer off, this is my scrap anyway. But just because it's here and the angle is okay for me, I, I'm going to risk it. Okay, so one, two and a half. Oh, I think I just keep scooching it. I got this little tab on my ruler and I think it keeps moving it for me. One, two and a half, okay. All right, I like it right there. Let's get the mat. Oh, it's foundation paper piecing or applique. Oh, that's nice. It's nice when there's options like that. Oh, I'm veering already. All right, we did it. Great. All right, so this is a scrap, and uh, all righty. Oh, Grace, scary. So Grace says, I haven't cut fabric in a while and had a real close call. That's why I asked about the glove. Yes, so that is the exact reason I am trying to form a habit uh, by sticking with that glove. Oh my gosh, this block is so weird. Well. We're gonna have one kind of weird color scheme in here, but I think maybe maybe this dark color will just kind of bring it all together. I'm gonna trust that. So, all right, uh, we can sew. I think we'll actually finish this whole top of the block um, today, and then tomorrow uh, we'll work on the the gray piece that applique. I think we might actually get pretty close to finishing uh, tomorrow. There is some free motion quilting, it looks like, or some sort of um, little detail work. That might be Wednesday, uh, potentially. But all right, let's get the machine over here. I have him on standby right here. And uh, so what we need to do first is we are sewing this guy to this guy. So let's cross it over there and one thing with this uh oh they even say here the secret to piecing the units perfectly is to have a quarter inch from the top edge on both sides of your sewing line so so uh you can see here i'm not actually going to line it all the way you know your your instinct is going to want to be to line up the corner with the corner right but we're gonna actually sew a quarter inch down and we're gonna be off just a hair. So I'm gonna get one of my wonder clips here. And I believe one of these is a quarter of an inch line. Let's just test it. So there's some lines on the back of a wonder clip and one is a quarter inch okay so it's kind of that last line so this line here is the quarter inch mark so I'm gonna just use this as a measurement tool so where is that quarter inch down that's where our parts should meet so about right there 
I know it's a little bit goofy. It actually probably won't matter too much in the end because um, it's going to be in the seam allowance anyway. So if it's a little off, that's fine. This is a big floppy piece, and I'm not, I'm not used to these big floppy pieces. I'm going to um, I'm going to clip it. So now here too, you know, it looks like the pink is over over just a little bit, but where it comes down at that quarter inch point, that's going to actually match. So I think I think that's the trick to this. Let's just throw a clip right there, and I. I think, I think we're going to be okay. All right, let's do it. Oh, that's a good idea, Bonnie. So Bonnie says with my gray fabric, have the, there's stripes on it, have the stripes go vertical, then it'll look like, like buildings. That's a great idea. I like that. All right. Let's get this guy started up. Ooh, let's get this light on. There we go. Now we're ready to sew. Oh, I don't have a leader. You know what? Let's use some of this fabric as our leader. I have to cut more thread for, for my leader, or cut more fabric for my leaders. Because I'm, I'm doing that extra project with the leaders of all this. Oh gosh, okay, so about right there, I think. Okay, let's remove that. I feel like this is testing my quarter inch seam allowance today. I think we maybe didn't match up quite perfectly, but I think we're in the good enough zone. Okay, snip. So I think I'm going to sew the next part on uh, before pressing, and then we'll press the whole thing. All right, so same deal. I am going to just open this up like that and Let's actually let's let's get up tall again. It's sometimes it's just nice to work on this flat surface here. <laughs> you know, it automatically looks a little bit better um, from it being sewn together. All right, so let's flip this guy down, and again, let's kind of shift that quarter inch till it's it's uh, where the quarter inch actually part meets up, not where the edge meets up. That's kind of the trick of angles. Okay. Get that last little bit here. And then we'll see how we do. I'm putting the right sides together. All right. Thanks, guys, for dealing with my little camera stuff. Zoop. All right. Here we go. I love this sewing machine. It just sounds like a lawnmower. Just a little panic that I didn't sew this on the right angle, but I, I'm pretty sure I did. All right, uh, let's get a second leader in here. Okay, that's that. So um, let's see what we got. So we just need to press this. I'm gonna just look at the instructions again. Um, it doesn't appear as if it's seeing what 
directions to press the seams. Press to the fabric. Okay, press to the fabric B. Okay, place fabric B facing fabric A. Press to B. So, okay, we're going to press to the inside. And it doesn't say for this one. So I'm going to assume that both are pressed towards fabric B. So that's, let's do that. Close this up before it dumps all over. All right, we are a good amount done with just, just this. So I'm gonna lay it on the back and we're gonna press both to this inside. So I'm just kind of pulling on it a little bit, just not, not stretching it, but just so that I won't be folding or pressing an extra little fold in there. All right, I'm gonna just rotate it. Oh, Bonnie started stitching the mandala. Love embroidery, awesome. I definitely wanna make more mandala embroideries uh, before the end of the year, because that one was fun. I did like that, that one a lot. All right, we're good on the back. Let's uh, flip that over. Geez, I need a I need a bigger pressing mat for this project. Again, I'm not used to these big uh, big quilt blocks. You know, this and this go pretty well together. We got that kind of yellow in there. I'm a little bummed we didn't find anything more mauve in in that bin. But that's one of my rules. I got to use the fabrics from from that bin for this project. So. I think I think we did an okay job. I think it's kind of goofy, but um, like I said, I think once we get that bl that gray in here, it's gonna really just kind of pull it all together. <laughs> okay, so there we are. Um, I think maybe let's prep. Let's prep this piece tonight, and maybe let's trace it to the the freezer paper but i think um that's probably good for the evening here so um let's grab some of this gray again just to kind of peek i got a lot of this gray so yeah i do agree having these stripes go vertical will be kind of fun so it does kind of bleed into this a little bit and we actually don't really see so much of this fabric so something kind of kind of like that is what we'll we'll end up with. <laughs> All right, we'll see how it goes. That well, um, we have this little kind of sun moon guy in here, so maybe that can bring some of the colors together too. Oh, mauve was hard to find in your fabrics too. You used oh pale purples and metallic. Oh, that's kind of fun. All right, for this. Okay, cut here. I'm gonna line up a line template one with this line all right so I think do we align the I think we're aligning I think I'm aligning this line here with the cut line here so I can just kind of see through my my um, paper just a hair so I think I'm gonna go just like that let's grab some tape I do have some painter's tape. Let's just use that. And just to make it a little bit easier when I trace it onto the next piece, I'm just gonna go, gonna connect the line there and connect a line here. Okay, so um, I am not doing it reversed. So if you are doing it with fusible applique, which is, a, I'm guessing, what a lot of you are doing. There is a reverse template in the the pattern, so I would do the reverse template, and then you're gonna you're gonna fuse it to the back side of your of your fabric. I'm actually going to use freezer paper, and I'm gonna fuse the freezer paper onto the front of the fabric. So since I'm gonna end up on the front of the fabric, I want. Um, this to be the right side. I don't want it to be reversed. 
So I'll show you that process here. So like I was saying earlier, I am not going to use any fusible for this. I'm just going to sew it down, I think. Or I'm, I'm going to try and actually use some glue. All right, I got some freezer paper. Let's trace this. So the freezer paper, this is just normal freezer paper from the grocery store. Uh, it's got a glossy side and it's got a just kind of more paper side. The paper side I'm going to put up there just like this. And you know what? I think I'm going to put a few more pieces of tape on the table here just to hold this down while I trace because this is quite a big thing to trace. And uh, I am going to just, with pencil, just go around this whole thing here. You could do needle turn. I am just going to do a raw edge applique and it's just going to be super raw <laughs> because um, my, my fabric does fray quite a bit. So I might actually just stitch over it a couple times. Like maybe I'll stitch over this line maybe twice go back and forth and then just let it be raw. Like let, let the edges get a little furry. Maybe, maybe that will just be the look for, for mine. If you want a nice clean edge, you could needle turn it or you could just do the raw edge applique with the glue, um, with the fusible, I mean, and that should do the job. But we're trying something else. I'm using using my uh, limited extra materials. I ran out of my fusible. I might have just enough for this. Well, we'll have to look at that tomorrow. I'll, I'll fuse. I'll get this on just so we can cut out the shape. But maybe I do have enough just for the edge of this again. Like I did the last, like how we did the mountains in the last uh, block. I... I was able to fuse just the edges down. I may have enough from that project still. We'll have to take a look tomorrow. That's been the challenge for this project for me so far is there's been a lot of fusible used and I am out. I suppose I could get a get an order together. I probably should. Time to get get more fusible. Okay, well this is super helpful taping this to the table. This is making tracing a whole lot easier. So I'm I'm going to keep this template because I'm going to need to have it for later so I know where this little sun and the Verona text go. Um I'm not going to draw it on the freezer paper one here, but um, I'll want to keep the paper, the papers for later. Actually, I probably could write the Verona in there and reuse the fusible to kind of get a placement for that. Yeah, I think we'll just leave it off for now. All right, so there is our little Verona. So uh, I think all I'm going to do yet tonight is I will trim this, and then we will start this whole uh, applique process tomorrow. All right, so let's just trim this. So I don't want to cut right on the edge. I want to leave a little bit um a little bit of a raw edge and i and i don't even need to i don't need to measure this it doesn't need to be perfect you know i'm just getting through there all it needs to be is not on this edge a little bit away from this edge so we are going to press this onto our fabric and then once it's pressed then we will cut it perfectly so that our we're cutting this and our fabric at the same time and that's what's going to give us our super nice clean edge and if I do have enough fusible, we will put a little bit of fusible on before we go to, and maybe we just have some fusible in some spots. Uh-oh, 
got caught in my scissors there. So again, this doesn't need to be perfect. I just am getting rid of the excess. All right, I think that'll about do. All right, I'll save that for a different project. Ooh, it's curly. I think I'm gonna just let this sit out tonight like that. So hopefully it decurls a little bit, but there we go. So this will go, let's, let's just peek quick. Let's stick this on to our background. Get a little hint of what this might look like. Oh, see, it's gonna be cute right away. All right, I think it's gonna work. And you know what? I think we are, we are channeling the mauve thought um, with what we got going on here. <laughs> it might not be our perfect like gradient of mauves, but uh, I kind of like it. I kind of like this little travel thing in here. I think that kind of does it for me. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are going to end it there, and then tomorrow we will exchange this with um, this really dark color. That's going to totally change the look of this all together, I think. So, all right, I'm going to turn you guys around. All right, so thank you guys again for joining me on Orphil Week, the Orphil Block of the Month. Uh, this one's just a nice, quick, easy one. I'm, I'm excited for it. There is that extra little detail work. Uh, I think there's with some batting underneath there as well, so it'll be like a, a faux chapunto. So that's where uh, it's kind of raised off the surface a little bit. So it's going to be a little poofy right where we have that moon or that, that sun shape. So that'll be a little interesting. I'm excited for that. I'll probably have to get the other machine out to do the free motion quilting of it all. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, maybe we'll hand stitch it. I don't know. Uh, it'll be fun though. I'm excited. So tomorrow we'll get this fused down and maybe we'll even get to all those detail works. Uh, we'll see. So thanks again, everyone. And again, uh, this is the last week for the embroidery of the month, the sloth pattern. Uh, so if you haven't gotten that yet, it's going to be leaving um, Thursday, I think, because Friday is Friday's May already, isn't it? And uh, And I also have my brother's face masks are up in the shop and they open up super nice and wide. I really love uh, mine. So this is mine. I stole a few. So there you go. It's nice and big. So it works for uh, different sizes, size of um, faces, which is great. John loves his and I really like the big size going all the way around. All right. Thanks, you guys. I'll get this up on YouTube at Penguin Fish Movies. Have a great evening. Good night.